This podcast is brought to you by Taft Spare. Taft Spare are Galway's number one GA pub in the heart of the Latin Quarter with live Irish music twice a day. It's a bit later than usual, but we're back with uh, another edition of the Senior and Intermediate Football Power Rankings. Just due, obviously, to the matches there that were postponed. We had a lot of drama last night in um, Group 2 of the Senior Football Championship and with the four preliminary intermediate games of the weekend. But it's now getting towards the business end and these Power Rankings are becoming a lot clearer. Barry, have you received any um, apology <laughs> letters yet in the post? No, and as I said, I, I've just just checked my emails, just checked the post. Nothing, nothing arrived yet. But um, yeah, I, I think a lesson. But who knows where? I think we're saying Michael's any. Who knows where they'll end up if 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 their appeal goes ahead or not? But at the moment, they find themselves in a in a relegation battle, which. You would imagine that not not you'd imagine they are they are probably the best team in that. Um, so I think I think all should be fine. But we've come a long way since we started. All these rankings have changed, and you've a you've a new more uh, technologically advanced microphone and headset, Paul. So uh, things are mo- things are moving on rapidly. And, and just with that, what do you have to say to all the people who gave you that abuse at the start? <laughs> I think lesson is uh, keep your powder dry. Wait, wait until wait until the end and see what happens. But uh, I don't think we were. I don't think we were too far off from. I think we had six out of the or seven out of the ten teams in the senior championship the first day out. So uh, we'll uh, we'll take that one. So we just get in. Um... To the power rankings, uh, like we usually do from seventeenth to tenth. So just to run through it, it's uh in seventeenth, the Van Electromore down one place on Spiddale up one place after their victory over Electromore in sixteenth place. Tashran with a huge result last night against Kalanam, but wasn't enough, so still sees them enter the relegation. They remain in fifteenth. Uh Michaels obviously had that buy, and there's talks now of St. Michael's uh Going to appeal with the current structure of uh the well the scoring difference, but there is a, obviously then a rule where the three teams are level in um group three, but in every other county it's those three teams in those three games they bring the scoring difference in. Michaels are basically wonder why Go have not been the only county to follow this in football, so they're bringing that to appeal. So they're in 14th and will be entering um, the relegation round Robin series. Done more coming up short um, in 13th place. Um, so they're down two places. Clannan with a disappointing result last night down three places. And down who were competitive with my Cullen at the weekend up two places. And Uvdred who um, would probably have regrets overall, but uh, an Eric Lee point in the Ultimately, the last play of the game uh, drew that game against Salton not the car, but not enough to see them through. It's still the teams at the bottom who have been here since the start, um, and now there's a couple of more teams joining them. Yeah, so look, the six teams, the six teams in that kind of a relegation dogfight as we speak. Um, uh, you know, to, to obviously two semi-finals, and then and then they join they join the bottom two teams. Uh, same Michaels and Letcher Moore. I'm right saying that, am I? Yeah. Um, so you'd have to say by by the I suppose results don't lie, and those and those bottom six teams would have to be in that bottom six places, and then above that, I think you know your top three or four have kind of taken play or taken shape, and then it's that middle cohort that we said over and over again that's just uh it's a real quagmire of, of where you put teams. And as I said, Oak Gerard, Anna Down, Anna Down. I, I think they're a team that will have big regrets this year, I think. And in most of their games, they perform very well. And they just came up short in a couple of games that, that sees them not go through. Oak Gerard, like Down, uh, Matthew Tierney last night, he was a huge loss to them. You know, and again, I was kind of really singing their praises and their team that I like. Um and again, like that, they had a, but that group two was just such a, you know, it was it was so so tight. Um, but then you're down to that bottom six, and I would say that Clannan, uh, I'd nearly separate that bottom six into kind of three, you know, three groups. I think on Speed Jail and 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 Ivana Lettermore have struggled all year. Um, 
I think Carla Strand deserves huge credit for the spirit that they've shown. Um, and I know they bet Kalanen last night, but I, I would just have Kalanen slightly ahead of them. And that kind of Kalanen, Dunmore, McHale, St. Michael's, like their three teams, Dun, you know, that, that particularly Kalanen and St. Michael's, they wouldn't have seen themselves battling out in a relegation place. Um, but that's where they find themselves and it's a it's a pressurized environment and they're gonna to have to go and perform and, and, and get a win. It's a funny thing here with the rankings because obviously you have in those relegation playoffs, you have Kalan and Dunmore McHales and Cal Strand Spittle, and then you have Michael in fourteenth and Ivan Alesha Moore in seventeenth. So like this is obviously uh going to change just with the way the parents are, but this is how you see the teams at the minute. Yeah, and it's not just after last night's games or Whatever. This is kind of how I would have felt overall their teams that have performed, that's where they deserve to be. Now, look, as I said, in saying that, you know, you would, as I said, you would see teams as being unlucky. And as I'd say, Michael's probably they will feel that they shouldn't be down in that position and Kalanen. But I think overall, no one can really argue if you're in that bottom six and you're in that relegation playoff, then I don't think anyone can say, well, we shouldn't be in, if you're ranking the goal of senior teams, we shouldn't be in the bottom six. You know, you get enough games, you have to try and go and perform. And and just that the way the cookie crumbles, that's where each of these teams find themselves. You mentioned Anna Down having regrets, which they definitely will, obviously. And Uchter Ed have regrets. I know they missed Matthew Tierney last night, but it was a really good performance last night. But... There is obviously games in the group. Kalanen was a disappointing result for them. The Barna draw. Are Utrecht and Anna Down the two teams in this half that'll have the biggest regrets looking back, like in the earlier rounds of the championship? Yeah. And like if you look at Anna Down overall, like we've said this before, they came into the championship with a bit of a cloud over them. There was question marks over management and you know, not didn't make themselves available for, for a league game or here and there. And the noises coming from the end of down camp weren't, you know, weren't exactly what you would have wanted coming into championship. And but when you when they look back at it, some teams will say, Jesus, we really didn't perform. You know, they'll be a dis they'll be disappointed about not coming out of the group and not progressing, and they'll be a disappointment about their performances. Where Anna Down will probably look and say, Do you know what? We're really disappointed of not coming out of their group, but we're happy enough with some of performances. And find something now over the next couple of months to say, look, let's go and build and let's try and have a real crack at this and come into next year's championship, you know, all guns blazing. And Anna Down will probably, if that happened, they would probably find themselves within that top 10 of golf football that sees sees themselves progressing to, uh, to knock out championship. Do you still see a gap just before we move into the top half from some of these teams to the nine we're going to move into, or is there still kind of some of these teams that can get up to, or, well, are at some of the same level as some of these teams that we're going to talk about? Um, Yeah, like I don't want to be harsh on Barna, but you would say Barna, Barna probably find themselves, even, even like, look, in the reality is you could probably say that there's five or six teams a little bit ahead of everyone else. You know, you would have expected, I think at the start, I had Tune fifth, Sawtill first. If things play out, you might still find Tune and Sawtill at the business end of the championship. But that, like that Milltown, St. James's, Barna, Uttarard, and Adown, that five or six teams around the middle, like there, there's very little to separate those teams. And, you know, it's it's really a matter of trying to navigate your way through the championship and making sure that you you pick up points along the way that, that get you out of it. But if you were to make a group of six of, of those teams, would you be guaranteed at the end of the round robin series who would be the top two teams in it? I'm not sure I could pick them, but maybe maybe you could, Paul, but but I, I don't think I could, I could pick them anyway. So just then into the top half, ninth Berna. Uh, down two places conversion rate last night four out of 20 shots so mm-hmm. that kind of says it all down two places in ninth tomb stairs massive massive credit to them huge character shown looked dead and buried in that group the biggest movers this week across senior and intermediate up six places saw till not a draw but they're still 
maybe question marks over Sawtell. They're up one place. Milltown coming up short against St. James's, so down one place. And St. James's for that victory up one place. Clare Galway in fourth. And then Montbellu uh, down one place after their narrow defeat to Toome Stairs. And then Kerr Finn with an impressive performance over Berna in horrible conditions last night up one place. And the county champions, Mike Collins, still remain in that top spot. Yeah, I suppose for me, kind of t- two or three standout comments. First of all, you know, what you have to say about Mike Cullen is they've come through their group, their group stages with full points with no Sean Kelly or no Peter Cook. Um, and Neil Mulcahy and, didn't play either at the weekend. And Neil Mulcahy. So that, that's, that's, that says a lot about where their panel is and the group of players that they have. And like, it's going to take a really, really good team to go and stop them. Um, or is, is, is there a team out there to do that on form at the minute? Not 100% sure, but, you know, it's still a, a long way to go and things change dramatically over the next couple of months. Um, Montpellier and Mylock could be disappointed. Um, you know, they, they they now could go and draw Mike Cullen in a, in a quarter final. That would make it, things really difficult for them. And the one thing about Mike Belly and Mylock is their players have been on the go a long, long time. Yeah. And I, I'm just not sure that maybe it's catching up on them a little bit. So the own Finnerty's, who they're are, all... we, are we just see, sorry to put in there, but are we just seeing the loss of Patrick Kelly now? Yeah, you're seeing the loss of Patrick Kelly, but but they still have probably like they still have Barry McHugh and Owen Finnerty, Michael Daly coming into it up top. That they still have a lot of decent forwards and and a lot of forwards that if you were to offer them to to a lot more clubs, they'd bite their they'd bite your hand off. But yeah, Patrick Kelly's a loss. But if you look at that Montpellier team. You still have the, you know, the Billy Mannion, John Daly, Matthew Barrett, Owen Finnerty, Barry McHugh, Michael Daly coming into it. I'm sure I'm missing. I'm sure I'm missing standout players as well. But, um, yeah, I, I think they'll be disappointed enough with that group campaign, and it now puts them, you know, not in the easiest, possibly not in the easiest path that they will find themselves getting to where they want to get to, and that would be a county final. Curve Finn deserve massive credit. They've, they're obviously down Ian Burke and Jason Leonard. They've come through with full points, and by all accounts last night were, were really, really impressive. So I think they they now deserve to be up into that second place. They're not going to face Mike Cullen in the quarter final. They would then find themselves, you know, Claire Galway going really well too, so they're not going to get Claire Galway. So Curve Finn would fancy their chances against whoever they, they're going to get 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 pipped against in a, in a quarter final, um, and the fact that Montpellier my lock now won't be one of the seeded teams means that one of those quarter finals is going to be really 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 competitive, um, and who knows what what way the semi final draw is going to go. But again, you know that every team has to play in its merits, and the four teams that are seeded they find themselves. They find themselves in a really, really strong position, and the other four teams and the two teams in the in the playoff, they have to uh, they have to go and perform. And the other the other last point in the, the overall context of it is huge, huge credit to Tomb Stars. And like you know, I said it over and over again. Like uh, they were so impressive in the league against Clare Galway, so impressive for that first 20, 25 minutes against Clare Galway. That middle part of the group was shaky, and their performances dipped, but. Massive character, you know, the big leaders, the Jamies and the Gary O'Donnells, the big, big leaders, big, big players. And when it, you know, if you're going to war and you want guys in the trenches, which are their, their guys that you want, um, and huge character, and they'll fancy their chances of, of taking Barna in a, in a preliminary quarter final and, and going from there. Just on a couple of uh, teams there, just on your own club, Kegoa, the game at the weekend against Dunmore, I don't think personally. They went overly well um, on performances, but to lose Jacqueline, who they didn't have at all for the game, and then to lose Jason Riley, who's been probably one of the standout performers, is that what you're most impressed by, finding a way when they're down bodies? Yeah, um, and the reaction has been good after a very poor first round defeat to Montbelli and Mylock, um, and obviously down Jacqueline, and Jason Riley has been absolutely outstanding for them, and Jason's a fella that throws himself at Everton and he really, really goes hard. And, and like if he's running from a deep position as a strike runner, you're not going to stop him. But then when the ball is 50-50 there as well, he's brave and, and picks up knocks here and there. So that's really impressive. And I, I, I will throw it back at you that I agree with you in the first half. They scored four points that weren't overly impressive. But I thought in the second half they came out and, and they kind of put their own stamp on it. And I thought mm. they, they, they powered on. So... 
you know, I think to kind of an old phrase, lost on more to do, but they're where they want to be. And, you know, outside of Mount Belly, my lock, who they'll want to avoid in the draw, I'm not sure that they'll, they'll feel, they'll respect everyone, but I'm not sure. And they sure. can't get Mount Belly because they've played. But they've played them in the group, yeah. So yeah. outside of that, I, I don't think there's a team that they they wouldn't fancy their chances against and heading into a county semi final. Yeah, and they'll 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 have their own regrets in last year's quarter final where they come up short to my column by a point. Just fifth and sixth because James is a Milltown plate. Nothing really between the sides really, but it was kind of a statement by James is they never mm-hmm. really trailed for a large part and there was a sense of kind of controlled performances by James's in this one. Yeah, there's a sense of momentum behind them as well. Um, and they've done really, really well. And I know, as I said, Daryl Leonard has gone in there from Clare Galway as a coach and he's done really, really good work with them and he's put a good structure on it and they all just seem to be really enjoying it and looking at their, I've seen two of their games online and they're, they're playing good football, they're moving the ball well, they look like they, they know what they want to do. They're not overly defensive, but, but but they can get plenty of bodies back and then when they get the ball and they get turnovers, they're moving you know head up and they're trying to get the ball in. In inside as quick as possible, and they've good runners off their shoulders, so they've been really, really impressive. Milltown, I, I wasn't overly impressed with them in a couple of games, but they've got through. I didn't think they were great against Dana Down. Probably a little bit lucky. I did. I didn't think the James's game was their their best performance, but they're there. You know, they're 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 in that knockout position, and you would say that there's very little to choose between between St James's and Milltown, but. I think Milltown just deserved to be that little bit further ahead than them. Yeah, obviously Milltown can only get Kerr finish like all in yeah. the uh, quarterfinal because mm-hmm. they've played yeah. uh, Mike Cullen and James's. Just we obviously touched Bern and disappointed uh, two massive character. The one team we haven't touched on, number seven, saw Tillon Picara, who started off at first. Got, got lucky enough last night because Uchtar went four ahead then, but saw Till showed character, which is something you can kind of Put, put your fist on that that's improvement from South Hill, but still what's happening here Barry because they were a county final team last year yeah yeah d- difficult to really pinpoint um and as I said I've said to you like it's just that it just looks like it's a lack of energy about the thing and that can be difficult to find if, if it's just not there no matter what management do and I've been in this position you're fighting and fighting trying to find something but it's just you're just not finding it. And that looks like what Sotty Nakara at the moment. They've, you know, all over the pitch, they've top, top players. And if you were to rank, you know, if you were to take everyone's best 15 and you were to score them one to 10 and add up all their scores, Sotty Nakara's team will be right up there at the top. But they're just not, they're just not getting it home. But in saying that, if they could go and get a, a good win in a quarter final, then that could be the momentum that they need, but they're going to have to, they're going to have to try and find, they're going to have to try and find, find that from someplace because at the moment it's just not there. They have to say they were relatively lucky to find themselves in the position that they found themselves in. Yeah, there definitely is an element of luck there. So that's uh, one to nine on the senior rankings. Just moving on now to the intermediate rankings. Uh, so Killer Aaron um, came up short in that local derby to Kilkerran Clumber. So they stay in 16th. On Karua, who led for a large part of that game against Kerfin B, but came up short, really, really disappointing result. Down one place. Kerfin B, uh, big second half performance for them, up one place. Kilkern Clonburn with that win over their neighbours, Killer Aaron. Um, they remain in 13th place. Uh, 12th, Gabriel's heavily beaten, really, by Caltra. Um, Clifton, similarly, heavily beaten by uh, St. Brendan's and uh, Williamstown 10th massive massive performance for them against Michal Browns at the weekend but um, just coming up short um, in the end Yeah absolutely I think Williamstown deserve Williamstown deserve the, the greatest credit there they've, they've done well um, you know some of the early results didn't go according to plan for them but came back fighting and and like Michal Brannox or a team then, when we look at the next page, Michal Brannox or a team that had showed huge momentum, but that defeat to Cartoon kind of took the, the sting out or of them. Conley. Or to kill Conley. took the sting out of them and didn't really perform that well last weekend and, and Williamstown could have could have pipped it. Um, 
just at the bottom, like it's really, you know, it's 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 hard to believe that you could be looking at Caro and Killer Aaron being relegated to, to junior football, like two powerhouses of Galway senior football in the nineties and the, the early noughties and then just things have things unfortunately have um have gone a little bit skew ways for them. But you know, Kilcorn Clan Burn, they won't show any mercy. They need they now also need to go and win probably one more game. To make sure that that they avoid that drop, but it's uh, it's certainly it that's certainly where the pressure is, and the the Saint Gabriel's, the Clifton's, and the Williamstown's, they'll be delighted that they're not in that, they're not in that, and they'll be looking over their shoulder after exiting the Go Intermediate Championship, going, "We're glad we're out of here. Disappointed we didn't win our preliminary quarter final, but delighted we're not in that relegation playoff." This game gets even bigger now um, between Carroll and Killeran in the next one because whoever loses is ultimately going to see their um, hopes diminished really before the final round because, like, well, there probably is still some chance, but it's like with two teams going down, it looks like whoever loses that is going to be in junior football. Yeah, it's it, that's the way it looks. Um, and then some of those games tend to end up in a draw, um, but who knows? But it's a real battle, and you'd have to say that. You know, neither team going really well, but you'd have to say at the moment, Caro will be slight favourites for that. And you know, as I said, it's a, it is, it is sad, and it's not good for Galway football if if Killer Aaron were to make the drop. But you know, maybe that's that's they can find their level, try and rebuild and and get back step by step and and back to to where they rightly belong. Yeah, and as you said, with Williams down, Clifton and Gabriel, they'll just be delighted not to be in that. Mm-hmm. But I think a team that lost. The preliminary quarter final and will be probably absolutely just really frustrated with their season because they started it really well. But it's similar probably to Anna Down who to Ed. I think Gore and Mary will have big regrets on the season as a whole. Absolutely, yeah. And they were a team that looked early doors, they looked like they were motoring well and the year has kind of petered out a little bit for them. And similar enough to last year, kinda they seem to flatter to deceive a little bit. Um you know, I questioned just kind of their, maybe not their leadership, but their kind of core group um, early on in the, in in these discussions. And they looked like, it looked like I was kind of talking out the side of my mouth because, because they had started the championship so well. But again, it has just fizzled out and they find themselves out of the championship. Now, look, they're, you know, I would say out of that four teams to find themselves, you know, finished and gone, you know, they're not in the knockout, they're not in the relegation, or more Mary would be the best of them. They would probably see themselves maybe one or two places up if you were to rank it overall, but they they found themselves where they find themselves and season over for another year and they're going to have to try and rebuild again. The teams that won the preliminaries then, because that's where there only is movement after that. Um, and I suppose just to run through it quickly, ninth or more married down two places. Brendan's remain in eighth after their victory over Clifton. Court and Shamrock's up um two places after their victory over or more Mary in seventh. Miho Brown's down one place. Um and I think they'll feel they need to improve um for their quarter final against one of A Abbey. Calcher, the most impressive team over the weekend with that victory over St. Gabriel's up one place. Ellen Arm remain in fourth, Glenn and Maddie remain in third, Munavay Abbey remain in second, and Kill Connolly last year's beaten finalists still remain in first. They've been first since the very start. So um will it'll be interesting to see. Can they remain there? There'll be a lot of excitement in that parish at the minute. But on St. Brendan's, uh they're obviously gonna face Kill Connolly now, but like they're a side that's steadily been building and impressive again. Rory Cunningham and Carl Healy inside really seem to be a dangerous kind of two-man foot forward line, but going about their business quite nicely. Yeah, and they're putting in a big shift and Joe Canny is down there. And I believe he's bringing half Medtronic in with him, doing a bit of training with them and half Curry Finn doing a bit of training with them. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're motoring along nicely. They have a big, big battle against Kill Connolly. Um, some of their results in their group weren't overly impressive. Uh, similar to Kill Connolly, they won their games, but you'd have to say at times it didn't look brilliant. And one thing I'll say about that kind of top five, six, maybe seven, maybe eight teams in, in the intermediate championship, but certainly that top five, very little like, you know, I've Connolly ranked first. They probably haven't done anything 
to deserve to drop out of that. But if any of the top five, six, seven, eight teams in the intermediate championship was to go and win it, um, it wouldn't overly surprise me. And I, I, I certainly from the top five, and you have to say, and and I will be certainly won't be getting an apology from from down in North Galway and Caltra. Uh, like they've done really well for teams that didn't come out of the group last year, albeit very unlucky, but they're really powering on and look just having the two Mannions there is such a big, big boom, a big, big boost to them. Um, and, and it's brilliant, you know, where we talk about Killer Aaron and, and that's not being good for Galway football, having Caltra back really competitive and, and look like they're building for the future. That's really good for Galway football, but overall, like that's, that's on paper. That's the way I have that top eight of the intermediate championship, but absolutely nothing to say that that when the quarter final draw is made that there's not going to be there's not going to be upsets and not going to be really tight games because this is a championship that there's a hair's breadth between them all and they're going to be really, really, really competitive. Court and Shamrocks are the biggest movers um this week in the intermediate um power rankings. Is that down to having a new man at the edge of the square? <laughs> Well, he couldn't play Hurland the week before, so they needed to. Uh, <laughs> he needed he needed a game. Um, and and but whatever about you know his on the on field, like off the field, he'd be big big character, and you know having himself and Adrian Varley knocking around that physicality is uh is a uh, is um is 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 hugely important, and you know. I remember in, back in my own day, cartoon had a man called Mickey Costello at the edge of the square at number fourteen, and if you're looking for an effective number 14 that's powerful and strong Mickey's the the man and Johnny Glynn has a, a good bit to go before he he matches Mickey Costello's prowess in that number 14 jersey but um, it, it's it's he's a big addition to them you know but I just think the loss of Paul Varley at the back is 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 is, is, is a tough one for them but look Donal O'Neill and these guys are still ultra ultra competitive um and they did a really good win in their preliminary quarterfinals. Um and, and will still fancy themselves as as a team that possibly could go on a challenge, but I would just see themselves I personally would see them a little bit below the top five at the moment. But you know, your momentum in this thing is going to be so important to get a, a favorable quarter final draw and you uh you know, you go and get a bit of momentum, find yourselves in a semi final and anything can happen. Yeah, and Brandy will obviously want to improve and Still yeah. no change. Still no change as well. Uh, obviously, from fourth to first. Yeah, I don't think he, like they obviously weren't playing, so I don't think they did. They did anything to deserve to be dropped. And I, at the moment, judging on the group stages, I, I would think they're the top four teams. But like that's very subjective on my behalf, and you know, no guarantee that the winner will come from that. But. They've done enough to deserve to be ranked in the top four. But as I said to you earlier on, this intermediate championship is so, so competitive. Just uh, finally to finish, Barry, I think it's probably been the biggest positive this year in Galway football, um, the announcement that Keane O'Neill is going to stay with Galway for 2024. Yeah, hugely positive. Um, big year for them. Um, we've talked about teams that have regrets. They're going to have regrets. I think the management, to her Porrick speak at a fundraiser, uh, a hospice fundraiser recently and he spoke about the learnings from the management as well and um, from what I gather they've they've kind of made a start in, in terms of uh, not official training by any stretch of the imagination but just in terms of contact and maybe shaking up the panel and back room a little bit and it's going to be a fresh start for everyone but it's a big big year year number five um, you know last year started so well finished fairly poorly but they've learned a lot, you know, Keane O'Neill will have learned a lot. They've had a lot of time to go and look at all the players in the club championship and hopefully find one or two that are going to try and break into that Galway team or maybe one or two that have been there that have tried to go, go, go and show the form to really push on in this Galway team. But, um, you know, it's great to have them there and it's great to have a settled, a settled backroom team. That's the most important thing. That's it for sure. And as well with the uh, minor management team uh, being announced this week, uh, another great appointment there too. But that's all on our power rankings. We'll be back after the quarterfinals. In between that, we'll obviously have Tume and Berna now on Tuesday uh, in the preliminary quarterfinal. But that's all um, for today.